Oh, man, there is uh, so much to get to this morning on a post State of the Union uh, Friday. The unemployment numbers uh, come out this morning, upticking from 3.7 to 3.9. The economy adding 275,000 jobs per report. That's about 75,000 above expectations. Charlie Gasparino, Fox Business Network, is here on KCMO in Kansas City. All right, Charlie, uh, let's just start off with the unemployment report and and what we saw about a half hour ago. What should we make of it? Well, I mean, the the unemployment number ticked up because more people are feeling confident. They're looking for jobs. I mean, that's kind of the the, the sort of base reading. I I have to go through it in much more detail to figure out exactly what sectors and all that. But that's generally what happens. And we're talking at a very low rate and the the economy is producing jobs. So uh, that's, that's really good news. I mean, you know, you can't really... You know, here's the thing that as bad as Joe Biden is as a president, both operationally and, uh, you know, intellectually or, <laughs> you know, using the word intellectual with Joe Biden is kind of a contradiction. But in any event, the, you know, the con- the American economy is resilient and, um, you know, we're, he's going to be running for reelection probably with a good economy and, uh, He's not going to be that easy to beat, you know, and I think that combined with the sort of disgust a lot of people have with Trump as a person. I mean, I, I would discount that all these polls right now and uh, just say this thing is a toss up. And as we get closer, if it remains this close, you know, Biden is going to be the favorite. And only because in, the, in those swing states, you know, Democratic ground game is pretty, pretty sharp. So you put. The economy and I mean, listen, Joe, Joe Biden could have a heart attack tomorrow. I mean, he's, what do you? He, 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 I mean, who knows? I mean, he's not in great shape, but I'm just saying that uh, it's not going to be that easy to beat. What do you make, Charlie, of uh, the fact that, you know, you're right. I mean, unemployment is where it is. Uh, people are getting back into the labor market, as you noted, uh, that that number is ticked up because of that. But uh, while the polling for the presidency is way too soon out, and I'm fine to uh, give you that, people are not feeling like the economy is in a good place under this president. So how do you square that with the traditional unemployment numbers being good? I mean, they're two different things, right? Yeah, I mean, that's the caveat to Joe Biden. I mean, he spent so much money on top of the Fed stimulus coming out of the the uh, you know, the, COVID, uh, the COVID lockdowns that he spurred inflation and you know the the wage gains have never kept up to the price increases, and the price increases were really high. Mm-hmm. And you know we haven't had really dis you know we've had disinflation. We haven't had deflation. I mean, there's a difference. Disinflation means the rate has gone down. Deflation means prices have gone down to match you know people's wage rates, and we haven't had that latter. And I think that's one of the problems he has. But still, you know, people are working. You know, the headline numbers look good. Uh, Trump is is a wild card in so many ways. I mean, listen, we've never had a president who started essentially a riot, you know, and, you know, got reelected. I mean, you know, that that is sort of weird. Uncharted territory. Then again, we've never had a president who barely sentient. Yeah. So, there you go. Hey, that is true. Uh, Charlie Gasparino, I, <laughs> I understand what you're saying here on KCMO. I, I'm getting some uh, some listeners are saying, Charlie, that it's, it's very quiet on your end or a little too quiet on your end. I don't know if you get the headset on. I hate to do that on the air, but some people are uh, saying they can't quite hear you. So I'm going to just mention that to you here on KCMO. Okay, I, 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 maybe, maybe this is better. I had you on the speaker. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. This is actually that okay. is better. Yeah, that is. Hey, I do want to ask you about and I was just talking about this uh, before the top of the hour. This proposed tax credit for first-time home buyers that the president rolled out last night, $5,000 per year for two years. I see no way that solves the housing issue this country faces where millennials want single-family homes, developers don't want to build them, and boomers are not selling their single-family homes. How would Charlie Gasparino go about fixing the housing market? Oh, God. Thanks for really putting that on me. (laughs) Hey, you're the smartest Uh, guy I know on this stuff. That's why you're here. Um. Listen, I mean, how do you? The only way you make something more affordable is to build more of it. And uh, you know, we one of the problems. It's like it's not that easy to build housing. I mean, it's like you know, regulation upon regulation upon regulation. And I think you know, you, you need to do a deep dive into that. And uh, you know, what's causing the housing? I mean, listen, I know it's causing the housing problems in, 
York City is, is exactly that, plus rent control. I mean, you know, you can't, you know, you have, you literally have, you know, kids that, that are out of college making 80 grand a year, um, you know, you know, sharing a two bedroom, 10 of them sharing a two bedroom apartment uh, that costs four grand a month. Uh, to subsidize because somebody that's in that building, you know, who's been in there forever, pays four hundred dollars a month. I mean, that that's kind of what goes on in New York. And that, if there is ever a dis- disincentive to disincentive to, to build stuff, it's that. And you know, and the government literally just keeps piling on these affordable housing programs and all these like weird stuff like credits and stuff, and thinking that's going to deal with the problem. But the problem is is inventory. You need more of it. Now. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, you, you know, talk to someone that builds out homes, and bring them on and ask them, how do we get more inventory? And he'll give you a better answer than me. But I guarantee it's a lot of it is related to, to the regulatory and tax environment uh, mm-hmm. to create these things. Charlie Gasparino on uh, Fox Business joining us. So then, Charlie, uh, with the unemployment numbers coming out today, um, how do you how do you foresee the markets reacting to this, not just today, but uh, moving forward, because that's what people are also looking at here. I mean, the S and P hit another record uh, yesterday. Yeah. So, so what are we looking at here? Is are, are these two things really unrelated? Because the magnificent seven stocks are driving so much of this, or is there still a correlation between these two things? No, I, I think it's more the Fed. I mean, I, you know, I reported about a month ago, both on Fox and and at. Um, and for Fox, excuse me, yeah, and Fox Business and the New York Post, that if you really talk to like people who watch the Fed, and that's the CEOs of these major banks, they are they have the best sort of contact inside the Fed. Is that despite some lingering inflation worries, like in terms of the rate, they think he's still going to cut, and they think it's twenty five basis points in June, and then you know maybe another one after that. So if you believe he's going to cut, mm-hmm. you know the markets like that. And I think that's why you see – and now there's evidence now, you know, like I said, I did that, recorded that out about a month ago, that that's likely to happen. I mean, Powell almost said it. One thing about Powell is he telegraphs everything. You know, there's no surprises with him. And he telegraphed that his rate cut, you know, the other day in the testimony. And, and I think it's going to be that. I think it's going to be something modest. I mean, he also said it doesn't have to be a 2% um, inflation rate. It could be – looking like it's heading to two, mm-hmm. you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, because he telegraphs. So that's what the markets are mostly reacting to now. I mean, obviously, you know, strong, strong, you know, top line numbers always, you know, help. But it's, I think it's the Fed at this point. Gotcha. Well, uh, Charlie, and that... if it reverses course, if it reverses course, you get a, you get a correction, obviously. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Uh, Charlie, have a great weekend. We always appreciate you on KCMO and we'll, we'll talk to you soon, my friend. Thanks so much. Anytime, thanks. Bye. All right. Charlie Gasparino on 95.7 FM.